What up, people? It's your boy, Stealth Jet, back at it once again. And I'm going to bring you some more gameplay. You know, I make fun of people's outfits a lot. But most of the time, they don't be trying. But all of the time, it's the dev's fault for making us look so damn stupid. Look at the guy on the right. No, not this guy. On the far right. His helmet... Gucci. Don't mess with him. Anyways, we are going to go on to Grand Time Valley. And in case you didn't know, this is my favorite map in the entire game. My favorite map in the entire game. To me, it's just pretty. And it's balanced. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. However, whenever this map puts on a cape, and it turns to nighttime, then it's it's not so pretty. It's not so pretty at all. Prime example, I get pinged right at the beginning of the match. But what does it gotta do with the map? Well, I would like to say, I would like to say, if this map was not nighttime, he would not have pinged me because he could see further. But maybe I'm giving him the, the benefit of the doubt because he probably would have done it anyway. My thing is this. If you spawn in the forest right over here, Lone Wolf turned off. You're the only one in the forest. You're the only one in the forest from what I can tell. I know there's been discussions in the past about, you know, spawn points in this little quadrant of this, at, of this map, like, as I like to call it. I think if you spawn here, you're alone. In the forest area. Like the entire forest area is yours. So where would I get pinged from? Across the river. Because you see, there's another spawn point right near that exit. Right above the White House. So that's where I got pinged from. And notice all the way up here, I hugged the edge of the map. And I did that because we all know ports will hug... No, ports will detect whoever's closest to you. So, what if you run out their area? You hear that. Those gunshots. I'm giving myself a bit too much credit here, but it sounds good. Those gunshots could have been at the guy that he pinged again. Because we all know everybody carries two ports on them. No one carries just one. You carry two. Because you want to find out your prey's direction. Because when you port somebody twice, you see which direction they're headed to. Duh. But anyways, enough about ports. Let's talk comm stations. Growing Time Valley, in my opinion, is the best map for using comm stations. Because 9 times out of 10, they're all going to be in the town. And it's great. I love it. I love that fact. It makes for a nice, a nice swift cursed airdrop in less than one minute but you see right here i'm taking my time because i don't want my move to be too obvious now i go for the comm station it's been relatively quiet relatively I've only heard one gunfight but pretty soon this is going to happen
correct me if I'm wrong, but the very beginning, we heard a Thompson and an M2 carbine. Where did the guy with the M16 come from? Were there are three people in this remote ass area on this map? Why were they here? Well, it could be for multitude of reasons, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to go into those reasons because we got some more game to play. Hear that mortar strike? We're not alone. It takes one person to call a mortar strike, and it takes another person to receive mortar strikes. So, we know for a fact there's minimum two people here. Minimum. There could be more, but we don't know. And that fact right there, that core gameplay mechanic, is the main reason as to why I keep playing this game. The unknown. Because, you know, you fear what you don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's why people hide in bushes. Because they don't know who's going to come. So they hide. You know what I'm saying? But anyways. Mortar Strike's done now. I'm going to go in here. Take a chill pill. And I'll look. That's where the airdrop's going to land. Alright. I'm going to go for it. Not the airdrop. But making it cursed. So there was no. There was no detector. Where that previous gunfight was. So I legit don't know. I really don't know why there are so many people over there. I don't know. But what I do know is I'm about to make this airdrop cursed. And there you go. Now, what's next on the agenda? Basically, survive. We can't do anything else. The column stations are now used up. You know what I'm saying? So, I guess I'll play the base game for what it is. Vigor. The game where you walk around, gather materials, and you come home. Well, not materials, but you gather resources from out in the field, and you come home. But there is this one thing called the detector you can use to find out where everybody is. And I'm going to go for it. Or so I thought. If I was this guy, I would have uninstalled the game at this point. I would have uninstalled and never looked back. Y'all saw my health. I was pretty much living on a prayer. I pretty much was. But, I guess it was fire rate that solved the day. Because we both shot at each other at roughly the same time. It's just that my final bullet hit his head. Before his final bullet can hit my chest. It do be like that sometimes. It really do. But, you know, back to the whole detector thing. Who's left? Okay. That's one person. And I believe that's the only guy I gotta worry about. But it looks as if he's going for the airdrop. So, I'm gonna let him go for the airdrop. And make himself more vulnerable. If not dead. 
to said airdrop. I'm going to go back to the guy that I killed. He was not no slouch. Number one, stem charge. Stem charge equals sweat. Number two, he went inside the house and opened up the window. Just like me. Number three, he didn't take the ladder. All those three things put together, let me know. He was a very experienced player. And I got mad lucky that I came out on top. Mad lucky. But I can't say it wasn't the weapon. It was me. I can't say that. It was pure luck. What's not pure luck, however, is that I can't find this damn button. And I'm like, ain't no way to put a button inside of a house. They didn't. It's right here in this little corner. So, now that I know where the time safe is, I like, well, not the time safe, but the buttons, all I gotta do is push them now and proceed forward to grab whatever is in the time safe. But wait a minute. Do I even know where the safe actually is? Let me go inside this house real quick. And, yep, it is not in this house. Goddamn. Okay. Maybe it is inside this brown shelter. Maybe it is. Or, well, yeah, yeah, it's definitely back here. Yep. Okay. So, I'm going to loot this here time safe. Did y'all notice that that airdrop is still on the ground the entire time I was saying that? I scared him off. And if you're saying, Jet, what do you mean? Think about it. If he grabbed that airdrop, let's say it wasn't even radiated. If he grabbed that airdrop and he knows somebody is at the detector and then at the safe, what's stopping me, the guy at the, at the detector in the safe, from trying to rush him and kill him? Because the airdrop is literally right in front of me. Or, flip that on its head, he could be waiting for me. Because maybe he thinks that now I know that he's around, I'm going to go for the airdrop. And entice him to come and try to kill me. Hey man. Vigor is more than just a shooting game. I cut this part out, but he shot off in the air as a form of celebration. I don't know why, but he did. Vigor is also a mental game. If you can outwit your opponent, you're guaranteed to outbullet your opponent. Notice how I said bullet and not bullets. Because if you can catch somebody off guard, then you got them. Simple as that. Any two idiots can offload two magazines into each other and miss 80% of those mags and then heal back up and empty another mag into each other. Any two idiots can do that. But it takes some brains and some map awareness to know if I go here, maybe I can catch him off guard. If I go prone and crawl away from the cover and stealthily walk all the way behind him. That's how I play, people. I'll be sure to catch you in the next episode. Until next time, peace.